importance of keeping the Mayo House as a place to visit is that it, it really does illustrate the frontier life of the 1850s and how hard people had to work to live out here on the frontier. The Mayos lived here. They moved in in 1859 in November. Um, they had been living across the river in Cronin's Precinct, which when Minnesota became a state was renamed Lake Prairie Township. And uh, there was a flood in the spring of 1859 and Louisa Mayo said, I won't live out here any longer. And so Dr. Mayo purchased these lots of land right here on Main Street. He wanted to be the doctor here in Lee Sewer and he built this house that summer and they moved in. They lived here for five years until he became examining surgeon for the Civil War, which was what moved him to Rochester. I'm Becky Pollock and I am the site manager of the WW Mayo House in Missouri, Minnesota. It's a great place to visit. It's a, it's a, in particular, people don't recognize Lee Sewer or Dr. Mayo um, having been here. And so to think about the Mayo Clinic that he's founded and the mansions that his family has built there in Rochester and then to come here and look at this small frontier home um, where they had a meager living is a, is a huge difference and it really illustrates what pioneers of Minnesota could do back then. After the house for a tour, um, one of the first, first things we look at is a portrait of the Mayo family taken in 1862. And it shows uh, Louise and her husband, Dr. Mayo, and the three children they had at the time of that picture. is Gertrude at about eight and a half, Phoebe at about five and a half, and baby William who was born in the house. From there we move into the family room, and the family would have spent a lot of time in the family room all together. Um, they would have always had a fire in the stove in the winter time, and they would have done things like read to the children. Louise was self-educated, so she very much believed in educating her children, so she would have spent a lot of time doing that in the family room. the kitchen and um, there's uh, several neat items in there. A uh, dough box which you put your bread dough in, you put the cover on it, it keeps the dust and the bugs out while the dough rises. Uh, all their bread would have been baked in the wood-burning kitchen stove there and there's a stove pipe that goes all the way across the room and that helps heat the room so that was done by design. Um, there's examples of dishes from that time period. The teacups have no handles. And that's because at that time period, people were packing up and moving west or moving wherever, and the first thing to break off were the handles. So you could purchase them without. One of my favorite items in the kitchen is the mother's rocking chair, because the left arm of the rocking chair is higher than the right arm, and that's so you could rock your baby closest to your heart and rest your arm there while doing so. It also illustrates the size of people at that time period. So Dr. Mayo was five foot four. His nickname was the Little Doctor and Louisa was five foot two. Dr. Mayo built the house by hand and so um, one of the doorways in the kitchen is just a closet, but it is the original size of the doorways throughout the house um, because he built it to his height and there was no need to build it taller. Next you move into the parlor and that's that room that was very prestigious. Uh, they would have kept the children out of there. It has a fancier wood stove, fancier wall coverings, the wallpaper, and they would have kept their fancier furnishings and items in there. It has much taller windows on the front of the house than the side of the house and the parlor really illustrates that. There is one item in there that is the Mayo's, and that is a camp chair. It was Louise Mayo's. She grew up in New England, and when she traveled to Michigan at the age of 18, she took that chair with her. She traveled by prairie schooner, which is a covered wagon pulled by oxen. In the evening times, they would circle the wagons, and she would use that chair. From there, we move upstairs into the master bedroom. The master bedroom is furnished with a rope-strung master bed. When you sleep in a rope-strung bed, your ropes start to sag. And so the phrase, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. Sleep tight is referring to tightening your bed ropes. So they want to remind you to do that before you go to bed. There's a wooden tool to use to tighten the bed ropes in there. Also baby cradle, rep representing baby William, who was born in the house. 
Uh, the master bedroom is above the parlor, so it is the only bedroom with a stove in it, and that's because they wouldn't have often had a fire in the stove, so in the winter time, they really would have needed that extra warmth up there. The next room is the girls' bedroom, and they would have had all three girls sharing that room and one bed until one of their daughters, Sarah Francis, passed away. There's a couple of items of toys from that time period, some different types of dolls, a wax head doll, um, a china head doll, and um, also a miniature replica of a cook stove from that time period. And in that time, salesmen would go around using that replica to make sales of cook stoves, and then they would be sent to the family that ordered them. When a new model came out, he would give it or, away or sell it as a toy. And so it's, it's a really neat little, uh, little stove. Uh, the front room right above the entryway and it's a very small room and Dr. Mayo would have used this office to prep the herbs that he used in his practice or for studying. He wouldn't have seen patients there as doctors at this time period always went out to see their patients. Um, if you were ill you would send a neighbor or a family member to go get the doctor. There's uh, several uh, medical tools on the desk. One of them is a blood letter and that was a very common practice at that time period. It's a little square item and it's got a little lever on it. And you push the little lever and it makes a little series of cuts to start the blood flowing. Dr. Mayo did not practice bloodletting. It was very common at that time period and he may have had the tools to do it. Um, but we don't know what in his education or experience um, stopped him from doing that. Dr. Mayo's first patient was a horse. He was working on this house when a gentleman came up and said, my horse is ill, can you help it? And Dr. Mayo was able to help whatever was wrong with that horse, and that really helped his reputation locally here in Lesueur. It gives great perspective of the life of people in the 1850s, um, what frontier life would have been like in this little house, the chores and things that they would have done. It's fun to watch kids go through and they don't even think about the fact that their kitchen might not have a sink or a dishwasher. Um, so it's important that we, we have these places for the next generation to see.